Hunter x Hunter episode 41 Gathering X of X Heroes クラピカがクルタ族の敵幻影旅団へつながる道を得た頃ゴンとキルアもヨークシンで開催されるに備え行動を開始していた。Wow, we made it to York New City. Ah, yes. York New, famous for its PC cafes. <laughs> They made a critical mistake not starting with pizza. Pizza run. Oh, the Hunter Network is Oregon Trail. Whoever wrote this is a real gamer, like old school gamer. This is an aside, but I've always thought there was something especially genius about people who figure out a way to monetize not the actual product side or consumption side, but the intermediary side, where they're not actually doing anything. You know the Oregon Trail Network takes a big cut of that 20 million Jenny, if not the whole thing. Unclear where the money's going. YouTube is a great example of that. I actually wish they would do less <laughs> sometimes, in some ways, that would benefit me, selfishly. This world really is a hustle. Everything's a hustle. I just paid it. Money is meaningless for us. Oh, we're inside. Oh, Greed Island is Jumanji. <laughs> it is Jumanji. <laughs> if you die in the game, you die in real life. So it's also the Matrix. I guess Jing did. And Jing sending his only son that we know of into Jumanji. We totally paid if we had it, <laughs> without a second thought. In real Hunter x Hunter fashion, this is, it's like the, the game to get into the game, to start the game. You realize they just paid 20 million Jenny for that information? And we kind of already knew that, like we knew we could buy it. Assuming that Jenny is yen, that's what, $200,000? I mean, significantly less due to the depreciation of the yen, but like, what $200,000 in America would feel like in Japan is more accurate, maybe. For that. It doesn't really seem like it is. <laughs> For you. What do you have? I guess there's not enough time to go back to the arena. God, these kids, man. At seven years old, way past the goal most people don't even realize in their entire lives. How do I get into that mindset? It's like a new, new ideal. Oh no, they get scammed? You know, there's something to that. This is sort of off topic as usual, but I think really interesting. Here's a thought experiment. Like what if the, the optimal way to live life is to most align yourself with what works in nature. Nature is often unpredictable, almost like it has a sense of humor, like a very dark sense of humor. Results are often outsized for both positive and negative. Nature loves redundancy for survival, hates game over events. So like things that are anti-fragile, as it's been put, are often things that are willing to let pieces die for great rewards or for a much bigger whole, like any species of animal where the individual animal is sort of dispensable in ways that can actually be a positive or like a strengthening reinforcer for the whole species. There's also the Pareto principle, which you find a lot in, in nature and in complex systems where an outsized portion of the entries have an outsized portion of the gains. How does that relate to Gonin Kalua? There's something in there about risk that I actually like about Kalua. This is very unorthodox and it's just a thought experiment, but here's an interesting counter investment strategy. Most people look for what they consider to be safe investments for small gains, but ultimately there's no such thing as safe. That's the unpredictability. You could put 100% of your investments, for example, in what everyone considers the safest investment vehicle, and that could turn out to be a game over event for you. What if instead of that, you broke up your investments into like a thousand pieces and put it into the riskiest things so that the very, very, very few winners, since they had such outsized gains, blow way past the losses of any other chunk or section. Like if the one or 2% of the winners are great enough, it can outdo the 98% of losses, but it's sort of tough to get yourself there conceptually because we hate losing. We hate looking at loss. It really depends on how you assess the skew. If indeed it is 2% and if indeed those 2 
92% winners would outsize the 98% loss. It becomes a very, very interesting, if not really spoken about or, or not well-known strategy, perhaps better than fewer investments in quote unquote safer things where the return would be like five, seven, 10%. I want to believe that if Klua kept trying, or maybe if he had distributed their money more evenly in accordance with the perceived chances that they actually would have hit the multiple billion that they need faster. But this is the more narr narratively satisfying option, I guess. It's got to be some adventure. They can't just hit it big with a few clicks. How did we get that? I'm not sure I want to know. What have you done, Kurapika? That was fast. They like cleaned up on that one. Sorry about all of that, those tests that were totally irrelevant. Wait, that was just the trial. Oh my god. Trials within trials within trials. How does anything get done in the Hunter x Hunter universe? You know, this is a, this is a treatise on society. It makes sense why they need to be tested so much, given just the blatant scams and terribleness and corruption in this world. That's what happens. You shortcut enough, you pay. Everyone pays. Employment karma. But what was the connection between like the fetch quest and the escort mission? I think he just wanted those things. Oh, sassy. Fair. Yes, information is good. Don't you forget it. Very hostile work relationship. Okay, sure. Did, does this guy want the boss to be protected or what? Like, all the obstacles he's putting in front of this task. He's the enemy, he's the threat, he's gonna kill the boss. But you've never seen a... Whatever that is. Of course it is. There's something like Star Wars esque about this. Like his candidates have the all the job prospects of a Darth Vader underling or like a Jabba the Hot dancer. Oh, is this the boss? Oh. So kawaii. My expectations subverted. It's even more terrifying <laughs> that she's a cute little girl. She's gotta have some powerful men. I think I saw her silhouette in the intro. Or in like the Hatsu description. Is that Armin? Yo. I've seen all of your silhouettes. I'm guessing these are the would-be assassins. They've got names, so they're not just going to be, like, dispensed instantly. Oh, she's a gangster princess. Interesting. Can't tell if actual fortune-telling or death note. So the father is the gangster princess. She reminds me of someone I know. Which is weird to say, but... Alright, oh, so they're troop. Troop members. <laughs> He's a Soka, he can do what he wants. There's a theme emerging in this episode. It has the properties of both. Rubber and gum, I'm told. That's going to be the first guy to fall to Soka. Sort of unglamorous introduction to them. Kind of just hitchhiking here. And also fighting each other. Wow, the cast of the show just exploded. At the auction. Is that Bradley? 
ったく来ないかと思ったよ君に来いって言われたからね約束破ったら君のあの年始方合が見られなくなると思ってさ It's sort of unreal to say this, but my, my appreciation and love and respect for Soka just rises with every encounter with him. Like, he's always so masterful of the situation. And then you, you wonder, how high does that go? You could say it's easier with Gon and Kalua because they're just kids and Gon is a little bit naive. But, like, every situation you put Hisoka in is a chance to test the different dynamic. And even in the Phantom Troop, this, like, fearful group of murderers who are allegedly very talented, he still has total social command of them and their fear while he's completely unaffected. What about the chief? That looked like arousal. And who's gonna say that? <laughs> you failed the test, you died. Disappointed, Uvogin. Oh, okay, you passed, Uvogin. Oh boy. <laughs> we got a lot of people there. A lot of people we know at that auction. I wonder where Hosoka will fall and all that. Hosoka is just as likely to kill them. There it is again. Everything is convalescing into a single point. It's the auction. Awesome. Yeah, it's really coming together. This is gonna be awesome. Such a cool build up. And so many characters that can die. <laughs> so many characters suddenly. We went from a cast of four to a cast of like 80 in two episodes. Poor Gordon Kalua just running by a video game, entering this whole mess. Lucky for Kurpika though, I guess, because he's going to need backup and help in a lot of ways. Poor Liorio. <laughs> Liorio is probably going to be involved. Liorio just wants to become a doctor. Man, this is exciting. And now I finally recognize these silhouettes and know who they are with some degree of clarity and very little recollection of names. I feel like there's about to be a lot of death though. Is it even worth learning? <laughs> Hunter Cyclopedia! Yeah, it's cool. So it is fortune telling. I have a very, very strong feeling she ends up at that auction, though. They didn't introduce all that for nothing. <laughs> Why do I feel so drawn to Neon? I think I have a problem. I have a very strange and somewhat, somehow, extensive experience with girls affiliated with the underground. It's bizarre and not at all intentional, but probably not a coincidence at this point. The counterpoint of innocence is kind of what makes it deadly.